Hi everybody, my name is Elizabeth and I'm a librarian here at the LSC Tomball Community Library. Welcome back to Screenshots, which is the series where I recommend to you great movies that you can watch for free through the Harris County Public Library. So it is already that time of year again somehow. Yes, the holiday season. Whether you love it or you hate it, there's no denying that the holidays impact basically every aspect of our lives from November through to January. From music, to food, to shopping, to, of course, movies. So before we get started, I will admit I am generally not a fan of holiday movies. I think that they tend to be kind of maudlin and schmaltzy, which is not really what I'm looking for from a movie viewing experience. Because of that, I don't enjoy most of the classic holiday movies. But I've found that the world of holiday movies is actually much wilder and much more varied than I originally thought. And that's because if you expand your idea of a holiday movie from a movie that is centered on a holiday to a movie that takes place during a holiday, you get a much broader spectrum of films. So if you're like me and are looking for a way to dodge the annual 24-hour rerun of A Christmas Story on TV, I have four somewhat unusual holiday movies to recommend to you that you can watch for free with your library card. So a couple quick disclaimers before we get started. The holiday season actually comprises a lot of different holidays from many different cultures, as I'm sure you know. But the film industry is very much part of the Christmas industrial complex, so all of these movies are going to be Christmas movies. Second, although these are Christmas movies, they're not really for kids. So I can't recommend that you watch any of these with your little ones in the room. Use these as a palate cleanser after you've been forced to watch Elf for the hundredth time this season. So with all of that in mind, let's get started. Christmas films are inextricably linked with animation, whether that be the old-school claymation films about Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and Frosty the Snowman, or the seemingly endless barrage of Disney tie-in Christmas films. But if you're looking for something a little bit different from your holiday animated movie fair, I would strongly recommend Satoshi Kon's 2003 anime film Tokyo Godfathers. Almost all Christmas films are about family, and Tokyo Godfathers takes that as its central theme. But rather than centering on the biological nuclear family that most Christmas films rotate around, Tokyo Godfathers explores what exactly constitutes a family. Three homeless Tokyo residents, a middle-aged alcoholic, a drag queen, and a teenage runaway, find an abandoned baby girl on Christmas Eve and set out to reunite her with her birth family. This takes them on an odyssey through the seedy underbelly of Tokyo, including run-ins with hitmen, the Yakuza, and other elements of the criminal underworld. Although their antics are frequently wacky and often hilarious, they do highlight the ways in which modern societies have allowed many to live in comfort while also pushing many to the fringes. And while they are setting out to reunite this baby with the family that birthed her, we are left to wonder through the course of the film if she wouldn't maybe be better off with the family who found her, one created on mutual love rather than circumstance. This film is definitively feel-good, but if you're wanting a feel-good movie that makes those feelings seem earned rather than trite, this is the perfect one for you. You can check out Tokyo Godfathers on DVD from the Harris County Public Library. While Tokyo Godfathers was certainly a feel-good Christmas movie, there is also an ever-expanding canon of feel-bad Christmas movies for all of my fellow Scrooges out there. The previously niche subgenre of Christmas-themed horror movies is now starting to expand past the campy fun we get with films like Black Christmas or Krampus to include films that are more genuinely scary. For example, 2019's The Lodge, directed by Veronica Franz and Severin Fiala, is about as bleak and cold a horror movie as you are likely to find, which is only exacerbated by the fact that it is set over Christmas in an isolated, snowy cabin in rural Massachusetts. A man leaves his wife to marry a young woman he met while researching an extremist Christian cult, rushing into a new marriage with her. 
In an attempt to integrate her into his family, he brings her as well as his two children to their isolated rural cabin to spend the Christmas holiday, but has to leave prematurely to attend to a work obligation, leaving his new wife and kids together alone. This premise is nail-biting enough, and even non-horror Christmas movies will often mine the awkward potential of family visits, but this takes that awkwardness to a supremely gothic level. Because while he may have met this woman while researching into a cult, she was actually a member of the cult and might not have been deprogrammed entirely from her radical beliefs. Combine this with the kids' distrust of her and their desire to mess with her, and you've got a ticking time bomb that is ready to destroy any potential for a happy holiday. For anyone in the anxious position of meeting your partner's family over the holidays, this movie is either going to be your worst nightmare or a cathartic acknowledgement of how stressful the holidays can actually be. You can check out The Lodge on DVD from the Harris County Public Library. Despite the fact that many, and arguably most, people enjoy the holidays, they do seem to be particularly deadly if you listen to filmmakers. But that doesn't always have to stifle your holiday spirit, as showcased by our next film, Francois Ozone's 2002 film, Eight Women. A Letterboxd user described A Women as being an all-female Clue remake that is also a musical, and I can't really imagine describing a movie in a way that makes it sound more enjoyable than that, aside from the fact that this is also a Christmas movie. Although Clue is often compared to A Women, I think it's actually closer to Ryan Johnson's film Knives Out. Over the Christmas holiday, a wealthy French patriarch is mysteriously murdered while all of the women in his home are busy preparing for Christmas. Because no one else is in the house at the time of the murder, it has to be one of these women, and they set about trying to explain themselves, coincidentally, through song. <laughs> Jaunty musical numbers about murder are really nothing new in the worlds of cinema or theater, but there is something uniquely silly about Eight Women's approach, possibly due to the music. The film is set in the 50s, and the music is inspired by the infinitely iconic, but still pretty silly, French pop that was coming out in the middle of the 20th century. A Women's Conceit is frivolous, but it does actually have some things to say. The entire cast, and therefore all of the characters, are women, and they all have different and uniquely stifling lives, all the way from the matriarch of the family through down to the maid. This film won buckets of awards when it came out, and it's really not hard to see why, because it strikes such a graceful balance between thoughtful, twisty, hilarious, and just genuinely enjoyable. So if you're looking for a different kind of movie musical to watch this holiday season, Eight Women is perfect, and you can check it out on DVD from the Harris County Public Library. I don't know what it is about the holidays that makes people crave movies in black and white. Maybe it's because so many classics of the genre were shot when black and white was still the norm, but I'm not here to recommend to you It's a Wonderful Life or Miracle on 34th Street. Instead, I would like to recommend Billy Wilder's 1960 classic, The Apartment. The Apartment is one of those movies that I would consider an accidental holiday movie, because even though it starts at Christmas and follows our characters through to the new year, the holidays really are not the focus of the film. Instead, it centers on Bud Baxter, an aimless corporate drone whose only goal in life is to make his way up the company ladder. He does this by ingratiating himself to the higher-ups through letting them have his apartment to conduct their extramarital affairs in. In exchange for a promotion, he offers one of his bosses exclusive use of his apartment, only to find out that the pretty young elevator operator he was interested in is actually his boss's mistress. If the topic of this film sounds kind of grim, that would be because it is. But The Apartment is actually a romantic comedy, albeit one that seems decades ahead of its time even with the black and white. Almost everyone in this film is deeply unhappy, but that unhappiness serves as a way to connect with each other rather than to alienate themselves from the rest of society. As a director, Billy Wilder is probably best known for the Marilyn Monroe vehicle Some Like It Hot, and when The Apartment came out originally, it scandalized audiences, particularly women, with its frank depictions of infidelity. 
But now, 60 years after its release, the apartment feels surprisingly prescient and modern in its approach, particularly in showing the ways that we can lose ourselves in the pursuits of material pleasures, but also how we can reconnect through reaching out to each other. If you need a palette cleanser after repeat viewings of the Beauty and the Beast Christmas special, The Apartment is a level-headed, tender love story that hits harder now than it probably did when it was originally released. You can check out The Apartment on DVD from the Harris County Public Library. Thank you for watching this episode of Screenshots. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter so that you never miss a future episode of Screenshots or any of our other great online programs. And be sure to let me know what your favorite holiday movie is. I will admit that these are some deeper cuts, but I would be willing to reevaluate some more traditional ones as well if someone can give me good reason to do so. Thank you again so much for watching and have a very, very happy and safe holiday. And I will see you in the new year. Bye.